Good morning. The purpose of this presentation is to present a topic today uh, that was published in Radiographics, um, the main magazine from the Radiological Society of North America. It was recently published now in October of this year. It's a very interesting analysis of um, the computer tomography usage of pre and post procedural evaluation for transcatheter mitral uh, valve replacement. <clears throat> so plunging into the topic a bit, uh, first I would just like to mention uh, a bit of the origins of this article. They, uh, the authors come from a couple of centers in, in Dallas, Texas, uh, Southwestern Medical Center from the Department of Radiology there and also from uh, the Baylor University Medical Center also uh, based in Dallas and uh, also Mayo Clinic is is another of the centers that was uh, involved that were involved and um, this uh, article uh, received a cum laude uh, award at an educational exhibit uh, last year so it's a really uh, top-notch article so to speak it's a really good one and uh, the learning objectives focus on describing the role of CT scans in the evaluation of um, the um, the TMVR and the optimal CT protocol. Uh, what they also are focusing on is the the importance uh, of evaluating some pre-procedural measurements um, for uh, the. The, the TMVR, which is uh, short for transcatheter mitral valve replacement. We'll be using those terms uh, interchangeably. Also to discuss the common post-procedural post complications and uh, how some of the um, approaches also have the intention to solve these and how imaging can play a key role in assessing uh, also these complications. So uh, yeah, basically focusing a bit on the teaching points, which are kind of like the, the thread that runs through it all, is to emphasize that uh, computer tomography can help providing in providing information on the morphology, uh, on the morphological and, and functional aspects of, of the mitral valve. Uh, and this, uh, this role, emerging role of CT scanning is complementary to the findings that uh, echocardiography that's been traditionally used to to evaluate um, many um, anatomical details and, and also the um, dynamic fluid uh, characteristics, uh, as you both, uh, as you all know, both through uh, transthoracic and um, transesophageal approaches. So uh, the CT is adding a really good uh, value, an excellent uh, value to performing uh, echocardiography alone. And we'll see exactly what advantage this, uh, the CT scanning has above uh, the echocardiography and vice versa. So the the, the device sizing uh, is very crucial because we're talking about millimetrical um, variances between patients and how we need to assess as um, accurately as possible to avoid complications as much as possible. Um, and of course, in this way, we can conduce, you know, the, the procedural planning in the best way possible. So uh, the mitral analysis is, is very difficult. Uh, in Anatomically speaking, it's a very complex um, anatomical structure. Its, it's nature uh, makes it difficult to reconstruct it. And so what they're emphasizing here is a simplified D-shaped analysis. And we'll talk about that and how that translates onto images. And uh, yeah, this can also help us, uh, the CT scanning, to predict potential obstruction, which is uh, the most feared uh, complication of the um, left uh, ventricle uh, outflow tract, which is abbreviated as LVOT. The neo-LVOT is the new outflow tract uh, after the mitral, uh, um, uh, the mitral um, valve replacement has been done. So another neat thing is the possibility, the potential that CT scanning is allowing uh, 
for making a virtual prosthesis reconstruction uh, by by some imaging characteristics some measurements that allow us to actually have an image in front of us of how the prosthesis could like look like and what it should look look like and also how it should be placed and where it should be placed um, so they're emphasizing here a bit we'll talk about that a bit later from the images uh, basically just like uh, giving an introduction to the way we'll present this this will be more like a pictorial uh, summary of the article um, as you see in the beginning you have there the article reference uh, and it's a really good read so um, I I refer you to to the article itself for for more details but uh, due to time we'll, we'll try to focus a bit so um, some of the risk factors of, of obstruction of the neo LVOT or the again the left ventricle uh, outflow tract uh, is when you have flaring, we'll show imaging uh, examples of, of these, uh, protrusion as well. There's also imaging examples as to make it more, you know, visible and, and under, uh, easy to understand. Um, so they're also talking about the definition of the obstruction. There are, you know, um, characteristics that are based on the uh, fluid dynamics and the, the pressure, the gradient increase uh, that defines this. So, um, just to introduce a bit, uh, there are several, many parameters that are uh, used as to evaluate the the favorable anatomy and also some of the contraindications of, of this procedure. Um, we won't go into detail, you know, of all of these now. But basically, when when the pre procedural planning is done, uh, many many parameters are measured as to keep them in mind and see if you know. Um, if this patient is eligible or not, but what we do need to keep in mind um, as a matter of time and, and, and summarizing is that we we have a contraindication, clearly a rheumatic mitral disease is a contraindication and also where we have uh, calcifications on the mitral leaflet. Um, this is an interesting comparison between the different um, studies that they were analyzing here like these are selected studies about um uh, i think focusing on um different methods and different uh, different uh, processes that are used and basically just interestingly comparing here that a couple of them were of you know more than 100 patients each and the procedural success rate was pretty high in all of them, 96 the highest in the Intrepid Team VR system, uh, whereas, yeah, none was uh, was less than 80, but keeping in mind that the tiara was, was performing le less here. Uh, the obstruction was seen mostly in the balloon expandable aortic transcatheter heart valves, and uh, the mortality rate was significantly higher in the Cardi AQ um, Valve, which is also true for the all day all cause thirty day mortality rate, which means like the mortality of patients from any cause uh, at a month interval from the procedure itself. Um, here, um, this is the first figure, which is basically showing the anatomy, uh, the complex anatomy of the mitral valve and the subvalvular apparatus. So first, we have a short axis CT image uh, showing the leaflets of the mitral valve. Uh, we have three scallops. Well, I mean, scallop refers to uh, to uh, sea mollusk, and that's the word that's used uh, just for us to remember, where we have the, the, the similar structure of, of the same of these uh, subsegments of uh, the leaflet of the mitral valve. So it's like a, a very soft dome, so to speak. Um, then the cu the cusps are. Uh, here, one, two, three, the anterior ones, and then the posterior ones. Uh, then you have, of course, the, the medial commissure and the lateral commissure. Here, I, I, I borrowed an image uh, from an external source, and I give reference to that uh, at the end. Uh, basically, it's like, yeah, having a, a more um, um, general uh, view of, of the same that we're describing here, which is like you have the anterior and posterior commissure, and here you have the 
the left fibrous trigone and, and the right fibrous trigone, which is of course the would be as in the, the lateral and the medial respectively. Uh, here, this is an image that um, uh, represents a short axis three dimensional rendered volumetric CT image. Uh, it's looking at the mitral annulus from the left atrium, as in from above. So we have the AML, which is the anterior mitral leaflet, uh, leaflet. And then the blue circle is showing uh, the annulus perimeter. There you have the lateral trigon and the medial uh, trigon, which is then, of course, the left and the right uh, fibrous trigon, respectively. Here you have the mitral wall uh, in relation to the left ventricle and the papillary muscles and the chorda tendinae. Then they have a three uh, chamber long axis 3D rendered volumetric CD ima uh, CT image here. The third image is showing the complex saddle shape. It's like the mitral valve has a shape like a, like a horse saddle. Um, and uh, the red dots is, is here showing again the trigonus. Um, there we have lastly there uh, a two chamber long axis CD image, which is so showing the subvalvular uh, apparatus, as I mentioned here, you know, all the supporting structures as the, the chordae and the papillary muscles. Um, continuing here, this is also an external image. Uh, this is basically emphasizing again the saddle-shaped uh, sh um, nature of the mitral valve. This is the anatomical valve, not uh, um, a prosthetic one. Prosthetic one. But I, I thought it interesting to just compare this image and, and have a visual reference, you know, to, to this uh, concept of the mitral valve being very subtle shaped. Uh, these are some of the different uh, devices. Th there are more than 30 devices of varying shapes and sizes, so we won't go too much into that right now, but uh, many different manufacturers and, and uh, options as, you know, how the shape can be, how uh, the material is, is combined. Uh, this third figure is, you know, very, very, very important. What it's showing here is that we have different approaches to the device implantation. Uh, here we have a transeptal approach, which um, will we'll show a really neat table uh, to illustrate this a bit better. But this is the transeptal approach, which requi requires a central venous axis, and uh, in uh, sorry, I got that mixed up. This is a transeptal approach through the septum, of course. So uh, this is requiring a central venous axis again and an interatrial septal puncture. So what is done here is a puncture through the atrium, uh, interatrial uh, septum. Uh, and that's one of the ways to, to approach the um, mitral valve region and to, to implant the 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 prosthesis. Now, another one is the um, the transapical approach. So uh, this is the one exemplified by the image B. The transseptal approach uh, is this one, and the transapical is this one. So we basically we access through a transapical uh, line that runs through the apex of the left ventricle. Uh, and the puncture allows there for a more rigid trocar and for larger device profile. So most of the implants uh, use the second um, approach, which is the transapical approach. This is the most used approach. Um, so some of the features, uh, again, this is just comparing the, the different uh, devices and there are some that uh, kind of stand out a bit. Most are m made of um, nitinol um, double frame or, or, or double stent or frame, uh, simple frame, but then you have the balloon expandable, which is interestingly enough, one that had, um, if you remember back here, uh, the balloon expandable had uh, more percentage of extraction this is the one that uh, is using a cobalt chromium frame <clears throat> and this is the only one that in in this comparison at at, um, at least 
is using the transeptal approach. All of the rest, they use the transapical. Uh, only the cardi AQ has, you know, the, the option of using either of uh, the two approaches. All of them are intraannular. Some are uh, superannular, uh, annular, where they're positioned, and yeah, some other characteristics as referred to the sizes and, and the measurements of the of of the different um, <clears throat> of the different devices. So figure four is uh, showing a, a three-chamber, long-axis 3D rendered CT uh, series of images with the device illustration. So they're adding the illustration of, of the different devices uh, overlaying the, the, the 3D image. So it's showing the different mechanisms to, to anchor the, the, um, the prosthesis into the anatomical structures. Um, Basically, you have first here like annular uh, capture with a leaflet engagement. This is, you know, where you the um, the processes are engaging, as it says, you know, the leaflets themselves. And here, this is a trigonal capture where also the leaflets are engaged. Here, <clears throat> here, sorry. Here you have a, a apical tether, which is this line here, uh, and then you have one by radial force. So these are some of the different options that they're trying to exemplify. Um, this this I found really interesting in table four that they're co uh, comparing um, how the echocardiography and the CT scan are complementing each other. So I just mainly focused on the differences here. Whereas um, when you talk about hemo hemodynamics, uh, CT scan performs less than the the, um, the echocardiography, whether it's transesophageal uh, echocardiography or um, or uh, if it's uh, transthoracic, right? So this is one of the points where the, the echocardiography is stronger, uh, but basically, yeah, also visualizing the anatomy and so on, you, you have a stronger point with a if you're using the echocardiography in comparison to the CT scan. But in most aspects, you know, the CT scan is performing very well. Um, another strong um, aspect of the echocardiography is uh, determining the adequacy of the intra-atrium septum for the transeptal puncture. So in this case, uh, if you're thinking about doing a transeptal puncture and, and you have to evaluate the intra-atrial septum, well, then it seems that the echocardiography is performing better. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, of course, the hemodynamics is something to uh, evaluate in the CT scan. Here they, they basically they, they start comparing the both, uh, showing the advantages and, and disadvantages. Uh, echocardiography, as we know, it's, it's widely available. It has a good spatial resolution. And the main, uh, perhaps one of the main advantages is the real-time imaging. Uh, which you don't have in the CT scan, uh, which also has ionizing radiation and it doesn't have any functional valve assessment. And you also use contrast material, of course, which that brings about a series of, of risks. But uh, the, the advantages of CT scanning, which is emphasized here, is you know the rapid image acquisition is, is less than 30 seconds. Uh, the volumetric data, you can have reconstruction in any plane that you need to draw uh, measurements. You can make uh, measurements that serve as uh, creating a virtual prosthesis and evaluating the risk of, of a neo LVOT. Uh, sorry, not the risk, but the, the, the space itself, which has to do with the risk of, of, uh, of the obstruction uh, at the outflow tract. Uh, it can also image you know, surrounding structures. Table six is showing the protocol. Uh, Basically, I thought this most uh, interesting to, to mention that uh, the data acquisition is, you know, is throughout the entire cardiac, cardiac cycle, but it's reconstructed at every 5% of the RR prime interval. So basically you have like 20, 20 reconstructions per cycle. Uh, and then you have the, the region of interest that is uh, on the ascending aorta. Uh, the whole coverage of the image is from the carina to the diaphragm. Here, uh, plunging now into the images themselves, this is the shape of the metral analysis, where we have the lateral and medial trigon, uh, respectively. 
you have a volumetric CT image here, which is obtaining the short axis of the metro analyst plane. And uh, also you have um, here below uh, a schematic drawing showing the complex 3D uh, shape. This is the anatomically correct saddle shaped analyst. What we need to keep in mind from all of this, you know, there are a lot of uh, abbreviations and a lot of shapes and, and just so that something can remain clear after this presentation is that because of the complex anatomical shape of the metro wall, what they do is they make a simplified D shape as to fit the, the processes in there. And basically from the lateral and, and medial um, uh, trigon, there is a line drawn, uh, which is uh, here called uh, TT, which like is between the two trigons. Uh, this here C is is showing the again the anatomically correct uh, image in a in a two D representation, and at a short axis, and what they're doing is they're excluding uh, the anterior horn of of the shape, uh, and the line that is drawn is the trigon trigon or as in between the trigons uh, line that is used then to to make the D. You can clearly see that down here. Uh, this is another measurement that's being drawn. It's the intercommissural uh, dimension, and then the um, the the SL, which is a septolateral uh, dimension. So here you can see later the the shape that the um, that the processes would later have. Here you have a Figure Six. Which, this is measurement of the mitral annulus. Uh, it looks all complexes, but I mean, if you look here, this blue spot is, is very central or key to understanding all of this. This is the left ventricle central axis. So we have an image here perpendicular to that, right? This is the short axis uh, at, obtained at late diastole. Uh, and here, just to correlate the, the protocol that we mentioned, that we have a reconstruction at every 5% of the RR prime interval. This is at 70 to 80 percent of the RR interval. So um, this is, of course, yeah, late diastole. So this image, uh, we can draw several lines from so that all go through uh, the central axis of the left ventricle. So you have different views, and this helps us to, to assess different aspects uh, of the anatomy. For example, here you have the three chamber long axis view, the four chamber long axis view, and then the commercial view. Um, we don't have too much time to go into each one of them, but uh, I, I thought it interesting to, to emphasize, uh, as you do here, that uh, again, here the D-shaped um, area uh, excludes the anterior form, horn the anterior horn of the of the area and it, it shows uh, a 3d analyst uh, d-shaped analyst by the blue outlines and uh, it of course then is represented two-dimensionally on, on this image right so um, here also you have a comparison which is important for the um, the procedure itself to keep in mind, you know, the difference between the uh, left ventricle central axis and the mitral analyst central axis. So that there are two different lines running through each. Um, here you have uh, a 3D reconstruction illustration. Uh, it's basically showing the left ventricle outflow tract, which is abbreviated as LVOT, left ventricle outflow tract. And this is an anatomical um, perspective, and then this is the the new LVOT, which is uh, after the the planned uh, procedure. So the LVOT is is the yellow area, and here the pink area. Uh, it's basically defined as the volume between the basal intraventricular septum anteriorly and the orthomitral continuity posteriorly. So here you have the the green area or the green lines basically is representing the processes that uh, is later to be placed and um, 
the area itself. So what we need to keep in mind, it will be more clearly shown in, in other illustrations later, but is how the mm, mitral uh, valve, the prosthetic, prosthetic uh, valve, affects the outflow tract from the ventric from the left ventricle uh, here just right before the the aorta itself and keeping in mind that the most uh, feared complication is uh, the the, um, the obstruction of that uh, outflow tract here is a simulation very simply that, that I mentioned that you know we can simulate the shape that should be used uh, for the um, for the mitral prosthesis. This is a virtual prosthesis through a digital model. Uh, so they're simulating how the device should be positioned and how its effect would be on the new uh, or the new LVOT, the left ventricle outflow tract. So they can see, well, do we have a risk of having obstruction here or do we not? Or how high is the risk? How low is it? What should we do about it? How can we, you know, uh, assess this risk and, and plan the procedure accordingly. This is here um, in the, the, the figure nine. Uh, this is a three chamber uh, and short axis uh, as a three chamber. Uh, and here a short axis CT images that uh, are both at, at um, the end system and they're following the, the placement of the virtual prosthesis. This is like all before the procedure is being done. And they're showing the area, the outflow area here. So this is what we'll look at later. Here, the outflow area is very, very small. Uh, here it's 3.5 uh, square centimeters. And here it's, it's much less. So basically they're saying as that areas that are greater to greater than or equal to 200 uh, square millimeters are often associated with a low risk of uh, TMVR induced LVOT obstruction. So this, I mean, imagine the potential of knowing exactly uh, or pretty close how my uh, outflow tract will look like based on the anatomical characteristics and how my prosthesis will have to look like so I can make a, I can simulate a, a virtual prosthesis. I can also see through the CT scan. It's amazing, really. Uh, uh, the outfall tract, how will it be affected with a, with a pretty close uh, precision? So, of course, I can look beforehand uh, if if this is a high risk patient or not. I thought that very, very neat. Uh, the privileges and, and advantages of, of counting with a CT uh, in the pre-procedural planning. Here we talked about flaring as one of the risks that um, that um, produce or uh, that the risks uh, that involve the uh, one of the risk factors that can produce obstruction at, at the outflow tract of the left ventricle. Here you see that when the prosthesis has an edge that is pro producing this um, indentment uh, or protrusion into the area, this is this is what is called flaring, where the edge is, is actually, it's not the same as protrusion, but just to understand, it's where the edge is uh, flaring and the tract is, is reduced. Uh, this is where the protrusion itself, of, as in the angle uh, and the position makes the area too small and, and the risk of obstruction is higher uh, as the protrusion is, is greater. Uh, Basically, like what it has to do is with um, all all of this uh, focusing on the risk of obstruction of the outflow tract of the left ventricle, as we mentioned. So here we have the figure eleven. These are factors that increase the risk of the same. Uh, we're all talking here about the obstruction of the left ventricle uh, outflow tract when this tract gets obstructed. So one is here uh, just basically summarizing where you have um, a CT, scheme, CT image showing the automitral angle uh, where this uh, angle is greater the higher is the risk of obstruction and it's the angle is drawn between uh, the central axis of the mitral annulus and the central axis of the aortic annulus so this angle 
being large, it's a uh, higher risk of the obstruction itself. Uh, as you can see, because of the placement of the two areas. Here you have septal um, uh, basal interventricular septal thickness. So the larger basal septal thickness increases the risk of obstruction. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about one of the possible solutions later. Uh, this, uh, again here, this is showing the, the length of the anterior mitral leaflet, uh, as shown here by the, by the red solid line. And uh, this can be done at both end systole and, 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 uh, and diastole. Um, so let's continue here. This is one of the possible solutions. Uh, the basal septal thickness uh, shown here, uh, alcohol septal ablation so here you have the septum that's thickened and um, what is done here is a catheter directed uh, delivery of alcohol here you have the star is where the alcohol is, is being injected it's using uh, a septal perforator branch of the left anterior descending coronary artery so the catheter it runs through that artery and reaches here injecting alcohol and then producing, as is shown by the corresponding CT images, uh, a reduction of that thickness um, as to decrease the risk of, of, of complications associated with this uh, increased thickness. Uh, here in figure 13, you have the lampoon procedure, which, uh, which is a laceration of the anterior mitral leaflet to prevent the left uh, ventricular outflow tract obstruction. We had talked in the third image up here about the the anterior leaflet and when this leaflet um, is is long it will cause a narrower area at the outflow tract so what they're doing here is to basically uh, lacerate uh, the anterior leaflet to create a wider area and reduce the risk of complications you can see that the area was increased significantly here at the Figure 14, we're uh, seeing simulating procedural fluoroscopic angles. Uh, basically, they're, they're drawing two lines here, which we've talked about, the uh, septolateral um, uh, and the um, trigon trigon line here. And between the both, approximately midline, we have the compromise view, uh, which is uh, later showing us very useful images at, you know, at this axis. This compromise view is here showing uh, in image B uh, in a simulated 3D rendered uh, CT image uh, the best potential uh, image for, for evaluating the the potential LVOT narrowing. Um, this is where we plan and see ahead of time is is the narrowing uh, at a high risk or not. Here. Um, where we uh, have the SL view, which is the septolateral view, uh, represented by this line here, the red line. <clears throat> this is the best for aligning the prosthesis along the mitral annulus central axis. So this is obvious because, I mean, we have this, uh, we have the central axis of the mitral valve, so we can put the prosthesis in the 3D image and, and run it back and forth and see where it should fit best, so to speak. Uh, these below here, they're like simulated fluoroscopic views. They're not actual fluoroscopic views, but they're like CT images as to compare them later during the procedure with the fluoroscopy. And uh, what they're basically trying to see here is that the, um, yeah, the placement of the, of the, as part of the uh, pre-procedural planning. Uh, the, the, the angle, the coplanar angle, usually is right anterior oblique or right anterior oblique caudal. So here you see the the, the prosthesis itself. Here, this is continuing the same image uh, or images series of Figure 14. It's a screenshot here um, showing a four-chamber long axis CD image uh, perpendicular to the analyst plane, top left here, uh, showing. Um, you know, below here, a simulated uh, fluoroscopic view. Uh, and here, the coplanar uh, curve that's showing the sinusoidal path that the C-arm around the patient uh, follows as it rotates around the patient, providing you know, a tangential view of the valve. So um, basically, this is 
uh, showing the structures from from these reconstructed images. So, Figure four, uh, sorry, fifteen is showing a, a calcification analyst or a mitral annular calcification. Um, here, first image is a maximum intensity projection uh, at the short axis, and it's showing exuberant uh, calcifications at the mitral annulus, and it's uh, mostly involving the posterior aspect, as you can see marked by the uh, arrows here. Here you have uh, showing uh, solid and nodular at the second image, and then the third image is showing uh, caseous calcification with, with uh, liquefactive calcium in the center. So you see the calcium, but it's also uh, with this particular characteristic. Uh, when, you, when you have solid um, mitral annulus uh, calcification, it has a, then you have a greater impact on, on the device anchoring than a caseous max. So uh, it's, it's one thing to have a solid calcification and one to have a caseous calcification as compared in these images when you speak of the, of the prothesis and how it's anchored. So here you have the landing zone characteristics. Uh, this is uh, where you have, a, you, know, you have a patient with the functional mitral regurg regurgitation. Uh, showing the myocard myocardial shelf here by the arrow. Uh, and it's often seen at the posterior mitral leaflet insertion point at the end distal. Uh, and here the double-headed arrow is showing the extent of the myocardial shelf. Here uh, in the other image here, it's a long axis CD image in the same patient at end distal, showing that the shelf uh, by the arrow is less apparent or even absent. Um, so the myocardial shelf has a uh, relevance for anchoring uh, devices like Tyara, for example, one of the uh, devices used. Um, and you you measure this uh, the depth from the posterior leaflet insertion point to the bottom of the shelf uh, on three chamber views at the end systole and end diastole. So again, the this arrow is showing again the the extent of the myocardial shelf. Here uh, at this image, which is a, which is a three-chamber long-axis uh, image, it's showing the disjunction of the posterior mitral leaflet from its insertion site at the blue arrow. Um, and the, the, disjun the, the disjunction is represented here by the double uh, arrow in red color. It represents the 12 millimeter disjunction between the mitral leaflet and the left ventricle myocardium. Then, um, here in figure 17, you have the vascular structures adjacent to the mitral annulus. Um, you have virtual fluoroscopic images in A and B, uh, basically showing the, the simulation of a, of a guide wire in the coronary sinus, uh, which is you know, shared by the green line. It's uh, using this as a fluoroscopic marker during the wall deployment. Um, and also you have the, the course of the um, left circumflex coronary artery, uh, which is marked by the arrows in, in D here. This circumflex coronary artery, the left circumflex coronary artery, is adjacent to the mitral annulus, and it can be simulated on virtual fluoroscopic, uh, as here in the C image, uh, and maximum intensity projection in D. So all of these are potential uses that CT is allowing us to, to have. Um, figure 18 is the subvalvular apparatus measurements. Uh, we have uh, here as the double-headed arrow is the distance uh, between the left atrial appendage ostium and the mitral annulus plane, uh, which is dash, the dashed white line here. There here, in this image, you have a two-chamber long-axis CD image showing the distances uh, in the double-headed arrows between the papillary muscle heads and uh, the mitral annulus plane. So this is the mitral annulus plane, and here is the, the head of the papillary muscle at both sides. So here you can also use this to, to, to show the distances. Here, this is another uh, image, but it's short axis, not long. Uh, it's showing uh, the distance between the papillary muscle bellies, like the thickest part of the muscle, uh, 
in between them, you know, between the di two different bellies uh, of the muscles, uh, which is here by the yellow double uh, arrow in yellow color. And here, this is interesting from a um, planning perspective point of view. We have here, you know, a thoracic reconstruction where the planning for the transapical axis, remember that the transapical axis is the most used one through the apex of the left ventricle here, is showed by the yellow uh, um, arrow. The volumetric CD images can help determine the, uh, the intercostal space closest to the uh, left ventricle apex. So this helps us to, to, to know where we should do, well, where the surgeons should do the, 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 the transapical axis in this case between the fifth and sixth uh, intercostal space. Uh, so also the angle, the best fluoroscopic angle <laughs> is also uh, calculated and simulated as uh, shown in uh, on the coronal oblique image here in B. So you have the slight offset that we mentioned before uh, between the the, um, the coaxial approach, the which is the, the yellow line, uh, the left ventricle central axis, which is the dotted green line, and the uh, mitral annulus central axis, which is the dotted blue line. You remember we, we had these uh, angles or these two lines uh, projected before, and now you see the 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 necessity or the extre the, the very good potential that these uh, angles and these lines uh, given the pre-procedural planning. Here in the figure 20, you have a cardiac CT-based analysis for the transeptal puncture, which is the other axis that we described. It's less used, but, um, well, it, it needs to be, of course, uh, assess, um, assessed and, and planned before through these images. And first, you have the, the simulated uh, anterior posterior fluoroscopic image. This is, again, this is not a real fluoroscopic image. It's from the uh, cardiac CT data. It's showing the fossa ovalis uh, marked by the arrow where we would like, you know, to, to access. And there, here, the second image is showing, again, a simulated fluoroscopic image generating from, generated from the codex CT data. Uh, it's showing the, the distance between the transeptal puncture, which is a straight arrow here. This is where the puncture would uh, actually occur. And the mitral annulus, which is the curved uh, arrow here. So this is measured for procedural planning. Now we're towards the end of the presentation, just in case you wondered. And uh, yeah, this figure 21 is showing the um, the uh, also another aspect of the analysis of the mitral wall in wall procedure. Uh, the the short axis CD image show the bioprothetic wall with thickening of the leaflets uh, in the A image here and the measurement of the mitral annulus in B. So here they're measuring the annulus through the CT um, pre-procedural image. Here in figure 22, remember the D-shaped um, area that excludes uh, the, the, the horn due to uh, the complexity of the anato anatomical uh, region. Um, Basically, what they're showing here, figure 22, is that uh, this is evolved in, in where we have calcification, of course, of um, the mitral annulus. And uh, where the procedure is done, and we plan the D shaped uh, area in, in the same. So the red outline is showing the measurement of the mitral annulus in a patient with extensive mitral annulus calcification. Um, again, here the yellow dots is showing the, the trigones, uh, lateral and medial, respectively. Here you have again the figure 23. It's a 3D printing for TMVR. Uh, this is a 3D, th a three-dimensional digital model of the mitral annulus with a digital valve inside here. It's the curved arrow here. Um, so basically, it's showing narrowing of the of the tract. This is the straight arrow here. We can see that this um, particular uh, prosthesis would cause uh, narrowing of the 
of the LVOT, which is the outflow tract of the left ventricle again. Here a photograph of the 3D printed model, mm -hmm. uh, which can be used for device sizing and simulating the procedure. Remembering that uh, nowadays we, the, the the great potential that uh, 3D printing allows uh, helps in the pre-procedural planning, as you can use the 3D image based on the anatomical details of the particular patient uh, in question, or that's being analyzed, and you can make a 3D uh, print of that uh, of that simulated prosthesis and then plan the surgery accordingly. Here in figure 24, uh, one of the last ones is an, the normal aspect of the uh, TMVR uh, device following the implantation. Uh, this is a Sapien 3 device in metral position here. Uh, the second one here is a two-chamber long axis CD reconstruction. The other one was also yeah, a two-chamber long axis CD reconstruction. And uh, it's showing the normal appearance of the Tendine TMVR uh, device, which is another one of the uh, type of devices that uh, is, is employed. Figure 25 is showing the TMVR-induced LVOT obstruction. So here you clearly have, uh, by the straight arrow, the neo LVOT that's severely uh, affected, and here the the implant itself by the curved arrow. Another complication is the pseudo aneurysm. Uh, this is a short axis reconstructed CD image in a patient with Keyson TMVR device. It's showing uh, a pseudo aneurysm with a narrow neck here. Uh, the neck is showed by the asterisk, located at the basal infraceptum uh, here showed by the straight arrow. Then finally here you have a malpositioned TMVR uh, value. We have a four chamber long axis reconstructed CD image showing an abnormally positioned TMVR device, which is predominantly located within the left atrium. So this is not a desired uh, position and the CT image is showing it clearly. Uh, yeah. So just concluding, you know, the, the CT uh, modality has emerged as a, as a very important, as a pivotal imaging modality uh, for the pre-procedural evaluation of transcatheter mitral valve replacement, abbreviated team MVR throughout this presentation. Uh, it, the CT scanning pr provides a comprehensive 3D evaluation of the mitral valve, which is, again, essential for the accurate device sizing with the potential of, of actually doing a... a simulation of how the size and the, the shape uh, should or could be. Uh, CT scanning provides uh, critical information about the, uh, the neo LVOT, which is the new uh, left ventricle outflow tract, uh, and the risk of the obstruction of the same. So we can evaluate from the CT scanning many different things like the obstruction risk, the landing zone characteristics, as in how is the anatomical details of this uh, area where the prosthesis will be placed, the fluoroscopic angles that we also describe in other images, and uh, the analyst relationship to adjacent structures. We talked about the circumflex, the left uh, circumflex artery, and uh, some specific concerns about the access. You know whether to do it through the apex or through the septum, the the uh, the, um, the interatrial septum. So the our overall clinical outcomes of TMVR have improved with the use of CT scanning, and uh, this is used for both screening patient selection of the TMVR, and it's also helpful for identifying and characters, uh, characterizing uh, complications, post-procedural complications, such as the neo-LVOT uh, obstruction and also the paravalvular leak. So here we have the external figure references. Uh, just to give like a brief summary and to, to kind of be, give my own feedback, I thought this really neat and interesting. We classically speak of echocardiogram as, as what uh, continues to be a, a very core uh, imaging modality when it comes to any sort of cardiac uh, assessment, especially when it comes to you know the dynamic flow uh, parameters and, and, and of course many fine anatomical details. But I thought it really interesting to see how CT scanning can complement and also sometimes even uh, be superior uh, in quality and, and potential in helping us to have many, many details that we did not have the possibility of having before the onset of, of um, CT scanning in this whole area of medicine. Uh, the great potential of having as precise uh, surgical procedure with, with as, as low uh, risk of complications as possible. So I thought that really, really important to, to 
to analyze and I hope you have enjoyed it as I have. And uh, yeah, if you have any doubts, yeah, the article is there to read uh, up more. But uh, basically, thank you for your time and, and for your attention. From the bottom of my heart, <laughs> thank you so much.